Google is asking some employees to share desks amid office downsizing. The company Cloud Unit has told employees that it will transition to a desk sharing workspace in its five largest locations. Employees will be encouraged to alter the days in which they're in the office, either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. Now, why am I drawing so much attention to an article about desk sharing at Google? Well, it's this last bullet point here that we need to be worried about. Internal documents cite slow return to office patterns and the need for real estate efficiency. That last bit there, real estate efficiency. That's what we need to be worried about because this is not the only news today about commercial real estate. Check this out in Bloomberg. PIMCO owned office landlord defaults on $1.7 billion mortgage. So desk sharing at Google and a $1.7 billion mortgage default. What is going on here? Well, this is the intersection of a couple of different things. Number one, years and years of zero interest rate policy and money printing at the Fed have ballooned the real estate bubble to ridiculous proportions, and that includes commercial real estate. Now we have the Fed fighting inflation by jacking up interest rates. Well, as these big loans for these big office towers mature, they need to refinance the debt. Well, refinancing debt at today's interest rates is too expensive for a lot of these companies to manage. And even if these companies are fortunate enough to refinance these big commercial mortgages, the only way they can do it is by raising rents on their tenants, tenants who are already suffering from inflation and can't afford the added cost of higher rents. And although this is still very early on, all these issues are coalescing to form the popping of the CMBS bubble, something we mentioned on this channel a couple of times over the last few months, something the Economic Ninja has been talking a lot about, and it may finally be starting. Now, I just want to emphasize it's still very early, and this is not a massive trend yet. But there's been a couple of these stories recently that we really need to pay attention to. An office landlord controlled by Pacific Investment Management Company has defaulted on about $1.7 billion of mortgage notes on seven buildings, a sign of widening pain for the industry as property values fall and rising interest rates squeeze borrowers. The buildings were in San Francisco, New York, Boston, Jersey City, are owned by Columbia Property Trust, which was recently bought by PIMCO. The mortgages have floating rate debt which led to rising monthly payments as interest rates soared last year. And I just love this statement here from the Columbia Property Trust. We, like most office owners, are addressing the unique and unprecedented challenges currently facing our asset class and customer base, said Justina Lombardo. You notice how they say we're addressing this unique and unprecedented challenge, make it seem like it's not their fault and that they're being proactive. No, they just defaulted on their mortgage. You didn't pay your bills. We have engaged with our lenders on a restructuring of our loan on seven properties within our larger national portfolio. We look forward to a collaborative process yielding thoughtful solutions that reflect current market conditions and best serve the interests of all stakeholders. In other words, she's looking forward to sitting down with the people she owes money to and getting them to agree to write off a huge loss on the investment they made in her company. This is a very rosy statement issued by a company that just defaulted on a massive one and a half billion dollar debt. Now, while this Google story and this PIMCO story are not yet a wave of defaults, they're not this big trend. It's still very early. It's not an isolated case. This one is from a few days ago. Brookfield defaults on two Los Angeles office towers. Properties included the gas company tower and the triple seven tower. The Brookfield DLTA fund had warned it may face foreclosures. This was dated February 14th. Brookfield, the parent of the largest office landlord in downtown Los Angeles, is defaulting on loans tied to two buildings rather than refinancing the debt as demand for space weakens in the center of the second largest U.S. cities. The two properties in default, part of a portfolio called the Brookfield DLTA Fund Office Trust Investor, that's a mouthful, are the gas company tower with $465 million in loans and the 777 tower with about $290 million in debt, according to the filing. So we're looking at three quarters of a billion dollars here in this story. So we had $1.7 billion in defaults in the PIMCO story. Here's another three quarters of a billion from this Brookfield story. Now these are getting into some pretty big numbers here, and these are in cities all across the country. And as it turns out, these stories are just the opening salvo in what I believe will be a massive barrage of commercial mortgage-backed securities that go belly up over the next few years as lower interest rate debt that was taken out years ago matures, and these companies do not have the money to refinance that debt. They don't have the income to afford the higher interest rates. 
And so a lot of these companies are just going to walk away and default on these massive loans. Check this one out in Bloomberg. Dated February 17th, commercial property market freezes, sending bond volume plummeting. Offices and retailers default, and there's little incentive for M&A deals. Everything is frozen, says Conning & Co.'s Paul Norris. Sales of commercial mortgage bonds have fallen off a cliff, plummeting about 85% year over year as rising interest rates cut into lending volume and defaults spook investors. Only about $4.27 billion of the bonds has been issued so far this year, down from $29.38 billion at the same point last year, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Investors blame the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate campaign, which has made it more expensive for borrowers to refinance, and higher rates have also cut into sales of properties by effectively lifting prices for buyers. Adding pressure is a recent string of defaults in office and retail property sectors, making bond buyers even more wary. And then there's this article in IFRE.com, CMBS market gets rude awakening from Brookfield defaults, also dated February 17th. And I want to scroll all the way down in this article to this section here that really caught my attention. Friday is dead. I kind of liked Friday. There had been expectations among bankers that CMBS issuance in the second half of the year would be bolstered by more workers going back to offices, but so far those expectations have not been met. On Tuesday on an earnings conference call with analyst Vornado Realty Trust Executive Stephen Roth said achieving 90% in-person office rate is fictitious. He said few workers went into the office on Fridays. I think you have to assume Friday is dead forever. Roth said 70% was more reasonable for in-person office rates to achieve from the current 60%. People are working from home. Some people are coming back to the office, but a lot of people are planting their feet and they really like this work from home, self-included. But here we're starting to get into why this is such a big problem for the debt market. Office building owners are seeing more vacancies as companies downsize their office space requirements or go entirely online, something particularly damaging for owners sitting on long-term leases, which means they can't increase rates. The higher yields that property owners will have to pay in order to refinance loans could be difficult without the ability to raise rents commensurately, said Gunther Seeger, Pine Bridge's senior portfolio manager in U.S. rates and securitized products. So the problem is these buildings, a lot of the offices are empty. The mortgages on them are coming due. They need to refinance. They're refinancing at a higher interest rate but with all of these vacant offices, the owners can't raise the rents on their tenants because the tenants, number one, can't afford it, probably because of inflation. Number two, they won't pay it because their people aren't coming into the office anyway. So what do the building owners do? They default on their loans. Now, before everybody starts shouting, Jack is spreading FUD again, and it's all doom and gloom. I just want to add, it's very early on in this issue here. Check out this part of the article. Office property loan delinquencies are projected to rise to 35 to 4% this year which is still well below the historic high from 2011 of 8.8%. Office delinquencies were 1.2% at the end of 2022. They're currently around 1.8%. So they are on the rise. They're projected to go to 35 to 4% this year. But when you look at this Google story and the PIMCO story and the Brookfield story, it's very possible that that 35 to 4% number is going to rise How much remains to be seen? The all-time high was that 8.8% number from back in 2011. So again, Google employees being asked to share their desk. Okay, that's not a huge issue, but it is indicative of an emerging trend of companies cutting back their commercial real estate footprint in order to control costs. And that's mainly due to higher interest rates, driving rents higher, and also the work from home. It's not necessary to maintain such a big office space. But that begs the question, what do you do with all of these buildings all over the country and the trillions of dollars of mortgages that are behind them? And I suspect we're going to be seeing more and more stories like these PIMCO towers and these Brookfield towers going belly up as these companies just walk away from these big debts leaving bondholders holding the bag. Oh, and by the way, the bag holders in a situation like this, chances are it's us. A lot of these CMBS and CLOs are held by mutual funds, pension funds, i.e. our retirement. So this will affect everybody. And keep in mind, this could also contribute to unemployment in the future as building owners are forced to raise their rents to afford these higher borrowing costs. That could cause more companies to go out of business, laying off more workers, which means this issue could eventually spread to the residential real estate market as laid-off workers start to default on their mortgages. Till next time, live small and dream big.